Uh, recognize that your mental health is so important. If you don't, then I promise you'll be so distorted. Stiffened by your thoughts, that's a mental rigor mortis. I'm on a hard mission and it won't be aborted. Assorted memories will seem to be your remedy. But in your darkest hour, form into your enemies. Trust your gut, judge people off their energy. Cut them off quick and fast, they are limiting. You're room to grow. You're listening to the Expect Effect podcast, where the concept of self-care is our primary focus. Consider this an acknowledgement of feeling, a judgment-free zone, the birth of every great idea within you. This, this is your weekly dose of me time, and I'm your host, it's Jess Nikia. No, you're not seeing double, but we are running two episodes every week per week. Do you hear me? Every single week through May 3rd. So keep tuning in. If you've listened to Unity, Unity, then you've already heard the weekly wind down segment. But if not, then welcome to this portion. And I do want to say we know life is hard. But personally, we believe that self-care, self-care doesn't have to be. So sit back, relax and unwind as we together uncover ways to truly expect better, do better and believe better. I don't want to waste your time. This episode is so good. I want to get right into it. Maya Angelou once said, if you don't like something, change it. And if you can't change it, then change your attitude. From childhood, it seems we have aspirations for our lives to become well easier. If only things were more simplistic. Day to day, we engage in fanciful thoughts and romanticize about living the good life, right? And that shouts to the old Kanye West. But this leads me to ask the question, does life ever really become easy? In my opinion, no, not really. But And there's always a but, fortunately, easy doesn't equate to peace, nor does it equal contentment. Easy means easy. That's it. Peace is still attainable. Contentment is still attainable. And joy is, in fact, attainable. Let's unpack. One, life is hard. This is something we can all agree upon, and it's a point I will keep running back to. If it isn't work, it's family, it's a relationship, an engagement, bills, household responsibilities, the list goes on. Tack this on to any other emotions you may be experiencing, depression, anxiety, fear. It's a lot to take in. The biggest takeaway, you aren't alone. You will overcome. Every stage of your life is going to require a different version of you. In some way or another, shifts will occur. They will not always be comfortable, uh, not always going to be welcoming, but in every instance, they will be necessary. But whatever the storm, you will weather it. The second thing you need to know is that nothing, even your dreams, is ever what it seems. It doesn't matter how wonderful the job is, how amazing the opportunity seems, or how great it looks walking in. There will always be things you don't like, and that's okay. This is where you develop a feel for what your level of tolerance is. Determine what works and what doesn't. Become comfortable with the word no become comfortable with learning self and acknowledging when something isn't working. There will be moments of grief for the opportunities you didn't take, decisions made in poor taste, engagements that brought forth emotional scarring. This is normal and expected. You're still capable of moving forward. If anything could have taken you out by now, it would have. Plain and simple. Finally, you need to understand that no one is an expert. It's okay to have mentors and role models respectively, but at the end of the day, we are all still progressing, learning, and attempting to make the best of the life we've been given. I heard Tony Bennett say that life will teach you how to live it if you just do it long enough. Okay, there's never going to be a moment in which we stop developing as human beings. That being said, don't lean too heavily on the influence of other people. You will never be LeBron or Beyonce. They're dope and amazing points of study, but you're not them. You can only be you. What did Mary J say? Take me as I am or have nothing, nothing at all. 
because that can only be me. No one will ever have all the answers. Be open to receiving feedback. Be open to taking notes. Be open to leveling up, but never assume someone who has the same probability of outrunning a bullet as you has it all together. You are capable of actively claiming your peace one day at a time. You are capable of doing everything you desire, even if it seems like the world is working against you. Because you know, and I know, life will never be fair, but it can be conquered. And you will encounter many trials, but with each season, you will find it's only for a little while. Just as you fall, so you will rise. And that's the ongoing theme of this week's episode. I want you to get up and I want you to keep going. Both when you're listening to Unity and now listening to It's a Different World, know that you're capable of pursuing your passions in a way like never before. Did my phone vibrate just now? Possibly. Did you hear it? Possibly. But if not, just know we're stepping into full effect with Tony of Black Thought. Um, I'm just really, really excited. Tony is such an amazing guy. Um, His full name is Anthony Eldon, um, but he is the CEO, founder, and creator of Black Thought, um, a wonderful Instagram page that's going to connect you with unknown figures in Black history or lesser known Black history figures. You're going to hear so many inspirational stories. And if you're wondering how exactly could that tie into discussing whether or not life really ever becomes easy well understand it's a different world in part because people like that made it one and furthermore they helped outline the blueprint of being able to tackle adversity and move forward in light of their circumstances no matter what they were facing they didn't allow that to stop them and neither did Tony in his pursuit to bring forth these lesser known black history figures to people like me and connect with individuals like me on this platform. I didn't stop either. I started a show on my phone in the closet. And now look at us and look at where we're going and look at you. Look at what you're overcoming. Man, let's not even waste any more time in this space. I want to get right into it. Let's step into full effect with Anthony Eldon, my boy, Tony, Black Thought CEO, founder and creator. We're coming back right after this. Hey, um, I'm Tony from Black Thought. Thank you for having me. Um, Black Thought is a black history media company where we basically put out information on black history, but like the lesser known things, because, you know, everyone knows Martin Luther, everyone knows Malcolm, but not everyone knows the, the lesser known people like Paul Cuffey, you know what I mean? So that's what we're about. Follow us on Instagram at black, spelled B-L-K dot thought. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. Man, thank you for being here. And I'm so, so excited to have you here. I want to loop back to an opening quote before we get started uh, by Maya Angelou, which is, if you don't like something, change it. And if you can't change it, change your attitude. And I think when we're discussing So many of the figures that you bring to light, like there were moments in which I was like, oh, yes, no, I've heard about this. And moments I'm looking on your page and going, damn, I knew nothing about this. And to some degree, you feel a way because you're like, like it it pains me a little bit like I knew nothing about this. And then it it makes me want to do more research and do diligence and be involved and engaged. But one continuous theme I'm finding from each character, and I think any hero we look to in history is that they have a tendency to just keep pushing through. Um, So what are some ways you you've kind of noticed from from these individuals that you're bringing to light that they were so continuously, um, you know, just diligent, just like about that action? Well, I mean, there are so many people, so many, like I can give you um, people from different eras. For example, there's a man um, who I just wrote about today, Jefferson Long, who pushed back against the status quo in Georgia. And it was right at, it was during the Reconstruction era, right after the Civil War. He made a successful business for himself as a black man right after the Civil War. Like, what? That doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Um, and then even after that, he got himself into politics and he became the second man sworn to the House of Representatives where he fought ferociously for for the civil rights and the advancement of black people. So, you know what I mean? And then even after that, when he got back to Georgia, he was persecuted. However, he still persisted, you know? So, like, 
there's just so much when it comes to how we can fight back and excel. And I wanted to ask that question to lead into when, like just in so many instances, and the fact that you said there are just so many stories, there's a plethora um, of individuals who have fought, who have overcome, who have gone against the status quo, who have done the unthinkable, and who have seemingly done the impossible. And so many individuals who hadn't even been heard of, people that we didn't know, not your Harriet Tudmans, Martin Luther Kings, or Malcolm X's. And, you know, you've created a platform to bring them to life, which I bet some people said was a little difficult to do. Yet, nonetheless, you pushed past those obstacles and you kept going. What would you say to those who are just so hell bent on or, you know, just exceptionally certain that things should just be easier, um, you know, just, that things should just be really stacked in your favor before you choose to go for what you're wanting to go for? Well, I have um, a very staunch belief that anything worth value will not come easy. And I also believe that the more something is worth, the harder it is to attain it. You know what I mean? Like, what I'm chasing, what I'm trying to do is is hard. It's hard. I haven't even unlocked more than, I would say, like 15% of my goal, my end goal. And I'm, I've been working at this for, like, about eight months now. You know what I mean? So this isn't an easy thing. And if you want it, you'll chase it. That's kind of what I believe it comes down to at the end of the day. And what would you say to entrepreneurs who are just starting out and kind of have this, I would say, I don't want to say it's fanciful, you know, um, in, in kind of really, really pushing and having this idea of what that looks like. But I think some people look at it in this box of, you know, I'm getting out of my nine to five and I'm, I'm not going to have to listen to anyone and I'm not going to have to, you know, clock in at this time or be accounted for at this time and in the in the instance of nothing ever quite being what it seems what would you say to an entrepreneur who's saying like i'm going to start out on this thing because you know tying into your point of anything worth achieving is going to be difficult so you know it's hard um so kind of just put that into perspective for people that may be thinking about branching out in that direction well when it comes to like you knowing it's going to be hard um, there's a really good Will Smith quote that is that goes like this. You don't when you set out to build a wall, you don't set out to build the wall. You set out to lay a brick. So every day you lay one brick, the best that a brick can be laid. No brick in the world would be laid better than this one brick. The next day, you repeat the process. The next day, you repeat the process. You do this so much that eventually you will have a wall. So when it's hard and you know it's going to be hard, don't shy away from like from chasing it. What you should do is embrace it, take it step by step, and just move forward. At the end of the day, just move forward. Even if it's something that other people will poop on you for, even if it's something that other people don't think is a successful thing, if you believe in it, chase it. And it's come down to that. I mean, I've had people in my life tell me that, like, what I wanted for myself wasn't feasible, that I should just stay in my nine to five and build a career out of it. However, now those people are the same people who have come back to me and have been like, wow, man, you are actually doing some big things. I didn't know you could do it. It's mind blowing, like even from a distance, but that's really wild to think about. I, the first people to doubt you are also the same people now, you know, returning to be like, whoa, look at this thing. Um, so I said again. Oh, no, I said, you know, it's kind of mind blowing the same people to turn around and, you know, doubt you are now here and like, oh, you know, look at this thing that's happening. This oh, yeah. is now so much bigger than we ever anticipated. Oh, yeah. So that's always a really wild side of things. It's actually, I, I remember seeing this quote a long time ago that goes like this. The people that doubt your dreams are the same people that will ask you for a job five years from now. Damn. That reminds me of that scene, what was it, Diary of a Mad Black Woman? The same people you meet going up. <laughs> like, you know, you see them coming down type thing. Um, and what is really that taught you in, like, what would you say are some of your bricks 
that you found that you were laying like on some more difficult days for you where it didn't seem so clear? What are some of the thoughts you encountered um, that you could potentially see someone else encountering? And, and really, what was the driving force that helped you to combat those particular things? That's a really good question. Um, so, OK. Here's how I've seen it, what I'm doing. I've seen what I'm doing as something that only I can do. Like, no one else can do the thing that I'm going to do. Obviously, others can do it, but in my mind, they cannot do it. I'm the only one who can. And not only that, there are hundreds of thousands of people waiting on me to do it. So that's how, that's really what's propelled me. Not only that, um, especially with my Instagram, keep them on, you know, shout me out, uh, black dot thought, spelled B O K. Um, even on my Instagram, every day I will wake up to umpteen new followers. I will wake up to umpteen new comments, umpteen new likes. And it really just breathes that breath of, you got this into you every day for me. And I think that's really what's pushed me. In fact, yesterday was such a struggle for me because I had something I needed to do, uh, a deadline that I, 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 that I put for myself, and I was scared I wasn't going to make it. And I ended up having to push off some things with my family to finish, that, to finish what I needed to finish. However, that being said, I, it, what kept me going through that was the fact that I knew these other people were waiting, that I knew my family would forgive, and that I knew my family would support, no matter what. So really, it's just my mentality of only I can do it, and thousands of people are waiting for it, and I, and I would also say my family support from my parents down to my That's baby sister. That's amazing. They all, like, my baby sister, I literally just saw her today, and she goes, Brother, are you a millionaire yet? So, so she's waiting. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yo, that's support is everything. And we've definitely spoken on this show about the importance of community and having a tight inner circle and making sure that you're good on all of those fronts. But if I could just, just take a moment um, from that sermon that you blessed us with right there, just to say like, I believe that I'm the only person capable of doing what I'm doing. And so often I want to stress the point that you are the key you're looking for. And that being said, like, when we talk about leaning heavily on the influence of other people, I think sometimes that's where even the best of us can get lost. Like we idolize people, but sometimes, you know, n to no fault of our own, I think we neglect the fact that, you know, we're not going to be them. So tell me how you've been able to separate, you know, um, idolization, mentorship, um, you know, individuals maybe that you have worked with or looked up to or people that that kind of fueled you, um, but still managed to keep your sense of individuality and make sure that you were creating something that really only you could produce? Um, so I, I have mentors, but I also have people that don't know they are my mentors. <laughs> um, and these are the people that I idolize. For example, I idolize Will Smith. I idolize Barack Obama. I idolize Denzel Washington. I idolize Damon John. I idolize Robert Smith. I idolize so many people. They don't know that they're my mentor. I study them. And they don't know that they're my mentor because they don't know I'm studying them. But I'm, from the moves that they've made, I've been able to make wiser moves for myself. And when it comes to separating myself from them, listen, I, I know I'll never be Will Smith. Know what I want to be Will Smith. But I know one thing Will Smith could also never be. And that's me. Okay. I love that. I love that. That's perfect because I think so many people fail to walk with that sense of confidence. There were people like, there are going to be people that hear this and get nervous. Like, damn, what did he just say? Who does he think he is? <laughs> Do you, does he know who Will Smith is? But it's going to be kind of one of those things where you really have to understand that your sense of individuality and purpose is that intentional and it's that important and it's that significant that you have to understand that no one you look up to is ever going to be necessarily any better 
than you by definition we all bleed the same way we're all humans and there's not going to be a person that's able to live out your experiences better than you or produce that kind of work better than you it's important that you know that nothing even your dreams is exactly what it seems so when you start to craft those things and you run into those obstacles there has to be a way that you're willing to push through the opposition whether that's by way of inner community uh, or a combination of inner community and self-care and most importantly just know that life is difficult but the greatest people People that we look to didn't let that bother them. They kept pushing and they were determined to be the best version of themselves possible. Tony, tell me how you were able to really finally reach a point of this level, like this level of confidence, or is this kind of confidence something you've always had? Um, you? This confidence is not something I've always had. However, it's something I have been accustomed to for years. So back in my middle school years, I wasn't this confident. Um, that being said, I was one thing. I was always funny. That was always my, my, my forte at being funny, comical, comedy. And in my high school years is when I really get, began to just embrace how funniness helped I, or create my identity. And I started to care less about the external things. I, like, I didn't care about my looks. I mean, I look good, don't get me wrong, but I didn't care about my looks. I didn't care about material things. I didn't care about so much. All I cared about was that I'm funny, and I knew that about me. There was nothing else you could do. You could take anything from me besides my comedy. And I think that, honestly, is what made me confident. Because me embracing the fact that I was funny helped me embrace so much about myself. It helped me embrace the fact that I that I love um, anime, that I, that I love cartoons. It helped me embrace the fact that I love comic books. Yo, books. listen, I, I'm so sorry to interrupt, bro, but I just subscribed to Crunchyroll, and it has been a deep, dark hole <laughs> of just show after show. I didn't know it was like this. I had really told myself, I was like, no. And I had never, like, subscribed to any of the anime <laughs> streaming services like Funimation or any of that. And then everybody was like, yo, get on Crunchyroll. And I was like, nah, I mean, I don't, I don't know about it. And then I'm like on episode, I've only been watching 91 days, I want to say for two days, <laughs> and I'm 10 days in. So it's, it's like, it's been some wild times over here. But I feel that I feel you there. Because I feel like your story is a lot like mine in that way. There was that one good thing I felt like I could do as a kid. And then it was like, okay, maybe, Maybe now I can embrace these other things yes. and like myself. Yes, and it, it has helped. It has done wonders for my life. I truly believe that. It's woken me up every single day with a smile, despite what may have happened yesterday. It's helped me navigate through so much. And like I said, this has been since ninth grade. I've been like this for years now. There's nothing you can tell me bad about me that I will believe. So... That's just like how I've been able to breed my confidence through embracing traits of me, which led me to embrace the other traits of me. And that's so important. I think sometimes people feel like when, when I say I want you to love you, I'm not saying that you have to suddenly embrace everything about you that isn't so pretty. If you embraced every little thing, you wouldn't have anything to change. So it's about loving yourself enough that you think you're the shit and you know you're the answer, but also loving yourself to know that there's always going to be room for development and improvement and growth. Um, as we close out, and thank you so much for sitting down with us, what is one way um, that you find you consistently claim your peace on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, your little self-care tidbit? And then also, what is a piece of advice you would give to anyone who is considering starting out um, high- you know, uh, essentially in the same realm of doing consistent social media posting, because I know that can be a different beast in and of um, itself. So let me tackle that in two parts. That will eventually turn into one giant part. <laughs> so for part one of your question, how do I find my peace every day? See, when I was a kid, my father was in and out um, of the house, not because he didn't love me or anything like that, or he he left, but because he was in and out of jail. And, you know, oftentimes it was due to me. For example, I remember one time he went to jail because he mugged a guy. Um, and with the money that he used 
from mugging the over the money that he got from mugging the guy he used to buy me diapers um my father despite that has always told me every single day when i woke up as a kid he would say son i'm proud of you and then he would always tell me every so often he would say son i don't want you to be like me i don't want you to look up to me i want you to be better than me and so every day i reflect and i think okay what steps did I make to be better than him? And if I made those steps, I'm at peace. And so every day I make those steps. One of those steps is to be consistent in my social media posting. And the thing with that is it's a lot easier to do constant social media posting when you do it all at once. And I know that sounds weird. So let me break that down. When I say doing it all at once, I mean creating all of the content at once. So that way throughout the week, all you're doing is just copy and pasting. Nothing more, nothing less. So it's just easy. So literally every Sunday I will sit down for hours and hours and hours on end researching and creating content. And then on Monday mornings, I'll revise and I'll edit and I'll create more if I need to. And then throughout the week, I just post. And, well, and then while I do that, I can focus on every other aspect of the business. I definitely love the point you made there to consistency. And thank you so much for being willing to share your story and go into such detail here on this show. I think that's amazing. I think the work you do is truly phenomenal. And when we talk about consistency, I think where some people have a hard time is getting past the feeling of wanting um, to do something or potentially, uh, you know, some would say they may have creator's block. What is, you know, just a quick piece of advice you would give maybe to someone to loosen up if they feel like they're in a state where they can't create or they're blocked off or, you know, whatever the case That's may be. That's hilarious because literally today I stared at my computer for an hour before I created one piece of content. So it's hilarious that she asked me that question. Sometimes, <laughs> listen. <laughs> but uh, here's how I would address that. I would do whatever makes me calm. So one thing that makes me calm and slows my mental processing is taking a hot shower. So after about that hour of staring at the computer, I went and took a hot shower until the water was no longer hot. And then I got out and I kid you not, I pumped out the entire week's content within the next three hours. That is really, really big for me because I think sometimes even I myself don't consider like trying to create or work on a high. Um, like Saturday, I, I want to say I was recording. I'd, I'd woken up and, and recorded with someone. Um, and very first thing when I woke up, I had recorded a solo segment and then I had another solo segment to do. Um, and then I was like finding myself trying to do the, the second solo segment and I was just ready to like throw at, like all of the equipment out the window. I was like, this yeah, just I isn't agree. working. I couldn't, I couldn't talk all of a sudden. I couldn't get ideas across. And I walked away from it for a little bit. I allowed myself to just mellow out. I started <laughs> watching some 91 days. Um, I had a sandwich, you know, I was just kicking it. And then I came back, literally it was the next morning, but I came back and I killed it in one take. It was just one and done. And I was like, yep. see, there we go. Okay. You know, and it was just realizing that, you know, sometimes you really do just need that rest and recuperation, man. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so, so much for sitting down with us. One more time, please let the people know not only where they can find you, um, but some of the most amazing historical figures they will ever come into contact with that let they didn't even know. Let me tell you off. about this man, Paul Cuffey. I don't know how much time we got left, but this man's story, ridiculous. And I also have a fun little fact. After the Yeah, story. we can keep going. So <laughs> Paul Cuffey is this dude from like the early 1800s. I think like 1807, no, 1759, something like that. And this man, he, as a kid, got into navigation and building boats. So as he grew up, that's really what he did. And during the, like, um, during the, the revolution, he would ship things across the sea to different spots, spots of the country where people were fighting, and he would have to avoid British ships, otherwise he'd get captured. He got captured once, 
and he was in New York. He was in jail for like three months, but after he got out, he just went right back to doing what he was doing. Um, and then eventually he just like got a really big, he became a really big person in the importing and exporting uh, sector with his own boats. And keep in mind, he also built his own boats and he only hired black people to his boats. Like this man is phenomenal. He gave back to the community by, by only hiring them. Oh, that's what? cool. That's cold with it. That is cold. Like, oh, I'm only going to hire black people on my boat. And also, we built a boat. Like, no, who can compete? That's phenomenal. Like, I'm giving back exactly. into the community and also creating it, it kind of, uh, His story reminds me of the Kodak Black quote, let me drive the boat. <laughs> but, um, so, anyways, he, he gets really big in this field. And around the time of the War of 1812, he is coming back from a trip to Sierra Leone, Africa. Um, and he, when he gets back to the U.S., he, doesn't, he didn't really know about the war. So when he gets back to the U.S., he sees we're in war, and one of his ships got impounded. So you know what this man does? This man goes to Washington right away, knocks on President Madison's door, and says, I want my ship back. And guess what he had within six days? His ship back. He got this shit. Whoa! Yes. No, he he walked straight he, up to the dough. He's the first said I was waiting on you at the dough to go through the front and I need my ship. House. See, I'm telling. That's exactly why they put the fence up. <laughs> I promise you, that fence was not there until he went to knock on the dough. They closed yeah, the no dough and they said, "No, we're not doing this anymore." I'm sorry, security. Yeah, no, we're gonna need to go ahead and establish <laughs> that. Did you see how he just walked in here? Exactly. That's oh what my I'm saying. god! This man had influence. And that, I forgot to mention this. He also, I'm not sure if he's the first, but he also won his right to vote more than 70 years before black people got the right to vote. So he was just really out here swinging on Caucasians. He was just giving them a run for their money. I'm getting color purple vibes. I'm feeling very like and the Jeffersons. Like this is like good times when Penny finally got mm -hmm. adopted, overcome this victory and emotion. Like, well. This is so <laughs> lit. Wow. And then. Oh my gosh. And I hear stories like that and it just, you just, you, yeah, you can't even imagine exactly. saying like, like I'm man, struggling I, out here. He went through so much. And it's funny too, because at the end of the day, at the end of his life around 18, 16, this man was starting to get a little ill but besides that what he was doing with his own ships that again he built he would take free and escape slaves put them on his ships and take them back to africa and settle them in africa listen we need to run it back before corona ever came around i should have just slid on <laughs> One of those ships and, and just made my way to the motherland. So been free. Because wow, <laughs> what a time we are in. I can't, I mean, like, I, I can't, just being a person to be able to give back to the community in that way and to be able to do something like that and establish yourself in that way. And then to know that eventually an individual like yourself would be here to tell that story on this platform to share so many like stories on your platform and engage a community of individuals with stories we wouldn't have known if it wasn't for you. And that's really just mind blowing that you've been a central hub and a source of that information to so many people and that you're going to continue to be a source and an inspiration. Um, and you know, for that information to an even larger group of people. Um, so let everyone thought, know where they can Black find thought, you one more Black time. Thought is spelled B L K thought. Um, you can find me on Instagram at black.thought. You can also find my website at blackthought.com. But real quick, though, I want to just, because you shouted out the platform, too, I want to just point out that I actually met the grandson of Paul Cuffey because he saw my story, my story on Instagram. Are you serious? That is so crazy. I mean, we met on Instagram, so it's clearly just I saw your work and I was taken aback. So I can imagine that you make connections there, but that's insane. Yeah. So you met 100%. him on It was Instagram so crazy. I was, I was shook. And he even like, he even was like, yo, no one has ever spread my grandfather's story. And he personally thanked me for doing that. And I was like, no, thank you. Your grandfather's a legend, man.
Yo, your grandfather was an OG. Do you hear me? Like mafia? Who have nope. you heard about them? Duck? Like whoa! I couldn't imagine just walking up to the president's door. I and, promise you, there were no. Was the there was. It was 1800s. not a gated community before. <laughs> before. Be lucky you didn't get home for that. Oh man, it's such it's such an inspiration. I'm telling, like I'm truly trying. I'm really trying to think about him walking around, just like I don't care about. He had my money, most of them. Uh, excuse, who says something? Well, let me go. You know what? I'm just gonna go to his door. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm just imagining the conversation. He's just sitting back, and somebody was like, "So you just gonna mm-hmm. go to the door?" He said, "Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to. The, I'm just gonna go to the door." Somebody was like, "Oh, you don't think that's you don't think that's a bad idea? You're not. No, I'm just gonna walk right in there. I'm gonna make my <laughs> point. If he don't see my way, you know what I'm saying? Really? We got six people with us. It's gonna be open fire season. Like I'm just trying to figure out, like what kind of you know was it? Did was it many men, fifty cent playing behind him when he was walking in there? Like I'm just really trying to figure out what the energy and the atmosphere was. It's just so amazing. And then for six days, you had him shook. You had him sitting in there like, did he really just come in here? We got to talk this over. He said he still got people watching the prison. How fast can we build the fence? You said that's that going to take back. six months. Well, I guess we just got to go ahead and give him the boat then. Cause... So it's just like, I'm telling you, it's just like a whole event. Man, that is so crazy. And thank you so much for sharing that with this guys. Listen, this has been another week of expecting better, doing better, and believing better. And I want you to expect better, do better, and believe better every week. Educate yourselves with platforms like Black Thought. Educate yourselves as much as possible. Engage with like-minded individuals and find ways to engage with your own community and people like you. Find ways to give back. Find ways that you can create. And you will be surprised at the many faces you can collaborate with. Thank you so much, Tony. I am humbled. I'm taken aback. I have had the best time. I feel like I've known you for thank who you, knows how long you. so this is amazing thank you so much um it's been a real real pleasure absolutely all right guys we'll be back next week for another round of your weekly dose of me time i'm your host it's just nikia be sure to follow me on instagram and facebook at it's just nikia we also have personal pages dedicated to the show at the expect effect podcast on instagram and facebook listen we know life is hard but self-care self-care doesn't have to be